The place, Franklin, Louisiana, deep in the heart of the Mississippi Delta, the year 1931. It was a quiet time for our country. We'd gotten out of World War I and hadn't quite gotten to World War II. And deep in that deep, deep south, a young, poor black man was born. William Lee Brent. It was a quiet life for William, a farming family. So quiet, they didn't like it there and decided to move to the big city of Oakland, California in 1943. It wasn't long after that that 12-year-old William began his life of crime. Life of crime didn't suit him well, so in 1947, William used a phony birth certificate to join the army. Of course, it was a little too late for World War II at that point, and his army career was short-lived. Soon after, he's promptly discharged from the service, and he returns to a life of crime back on the streets. At the age of 18, William steals a bicycle and is sentenced to San Quentin Prison. Serving five to life, William is released eight years later in 1962. Had he been a little more rough and tumble during his prison term, he would have bore witness to the classic performance by Johnny Cash in 1969. But William had other plans. He vowed he would never set foot in a prison again. It was around his release that William Lee Brent found his true calling, the Black Panthers. Because William was far older than his fellow protesters, they quickly accepted him and he rose in the ranks, becoming a spokesperson and eventually a bodyguard. Unfortunately, William couldn't stay out of trouble for too long. In November of 1968, after a robbery gone wrong, William is one of three men captured after a heavy, drug-fueled shootout with the police. Holding true to his vow never to go back to prison, in June of 1969, while out on bail, William put on his Sunday best and went to the airport. He boarded TWA Flight 154 from San Francisco and began his flight out of town. Somewhere over Nevada, William had other plans. Brandishing a pistol, he stands up, apologizes to the passengers, and informs them that they're headed to Cuba. The passengers were not happy. And neither were the airlines. After all, this was the 68th hijacking so far in this year. Believing he would be welcomed in Cuba as a hero, he was quite shocked to find the military waiting for him, along with another 22 months in prison. Upon his release, William took up to the good life. He set himself on the path of righteousness. He began cutting sugar cane, became an English teacher, married a hot American journalist, and he became a radio DJ for Radio Cuba. With the quiet life upon him and his wild times behind him, William settled down. His life took over, and he became a normal man. Exile from the United States living in Cuba. William Lee Brent died of bronchial pneumonia this week at his home at the age of 75. William Lee Brent, 1931 to November 26, 2006. This week in death. <laughs>